<laughs> Jacques, today I looked at the forecast and it literally just said wind. <laughs> well, let's get some chores then before we get blown away then. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it took us where we needed to go. And those of you who remember, <laughs> the Machete Boys are back. Actually, you've got an ax. That's all I can find. Why are we standing next to some bananas with an ax and a machete, Jacques? Well, I think uh, we're a little overcrowded here. I yes. We need to do a little bit of thinning. This is a standard Cavendish, Cavendish banana. There are three, this. not what you really want to be doing with banana. Yeah, because really you're going to just compete with each other and you're not going to get the food set. Yeah. you got to choose the winner. So to me, this is the winner. I agree. Pretty, pretty <laughs> obvious on that. <laughs> Who wants to do the honors first? I you feel like... You want to like... give it an ax chop or you want me to hit it with the chetty? Because... Guys, yes, you could try to split this off. I'd rather chop it at the base, not damage any potential root structure on the one that's going to survive. These really aren't going to transplant well. No, they're really they're too not. big. Yeah. Honestly, I it? feel like if I axe this, it's going to bounce. I feel like we need a, maybe, maybe a little bit more of a nuanced tool. I think you need to hit it. But I think I'll give it a try. Just don't cut the irrigation lines. <laughs> that was right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's actually not bad. Slightly effective. It's actually not bad. Probably not the right tool for the job. No, probably not. You need someone to come finish it off? I think for so. You? All right. Chetty Cav is here. <laughs> Fun fact, I named Chetty the hen after the machete. <laughs> I right. lost my hat there. <laughs> it <probably stopped. laughs> I think in general, you're going to want this, you know, as close to the... Uh, Juicy. <laughs> it's really juicy, dude. What the? Do you think I could just snap this? Ooh. Smells kind of fresh. Honestly, that smells a lot like a cucumber. It smells like a banana skin. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally different thing. <laughs> Honestly, it looks like a heart of palm inside. It really does. And I was just about to put a disclaimer, like, sometimes we offer good advice, but maybe not the best practices. Yes. In this case, maybe grab a handsaw, Cut it down, but you know, a machete is so satisfying it's to just use. It's so fun to use. I, I want to chetty this one. I want to chetty it. Okay. I want to chetty it. So I was going to try I'd to say like... clear the area. <laughs> okay. Because there's no Get guarantees. And I missed the line. <laughs> Perfectly And I the missed line. the line. Honestly? All right. I mean, problem solved. Cucumber. Cucumber, you think? Let me give, it, give that one a hit. Another one. Hmm. Tell us what you guys think. So, Jacques. At least the banana has a chance now. I would say it still doesn't really want to grow in the environment we've been giving it. The wind right now, the temperatures, just the fact it's in San Diego and not yeah. in Hawaii, for example, <laughs> is, is one of the things that's working against it. But we've at least given it the ability to have a shot because I've grown. I mean, this is like the fourth offshoot of this plant. Right. The main one is dead right down in there. The middle, so yeah. yeah, we'll clean this up later. But chore number one, complete. All right, we're armed with real tools for the job. And we're out here in the orchard at the best stone fruit we have here, Jacques. Very prolific. It's prolific. It's almost too prolific, and that's why we're here. <laughs> if you remember, a while ago, we actually pruned this back. This was probably like September of last year. So here's what happened. We had a flowering event, as you can see with this one right here. This is just a little bit behind our peach tree. So there's some flowers still lingering, but really mostly it is young fruit. Yeah. And, and far too many young fruit. So we want to think right now, the time's passed for like a shaping cut. Right. Right. It's more, does the structure look good? I would say we actually did a pretty damn good job. Yeah. You could make an argument, I, I suppose, to like clean out some of these in yeah, here. Yeah, anything that might be crossing or things like but that. But I don't really think I'm ready to do that yet. No. I'm more ready to just like assess and do a little thinning here. And then we can take okay. a look at the citrus, which needs a lot more of a haircut. One thing I'm noticing is that there are some of these branches that... <laughs> Well, anyway, yeah. uh, appear to be dead. Yes. And yes. so I think like we could cut any of these dead branches without harming any production. I agree. I agree. What I'm going to do is get somewhat aggressive on some of these. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten peaches in about two <laughs> inches of branch space. Yeah, that's not going to work. Even if you could grow them, you still wouldn't because it's, it, it's going to break the stem no matter what. Yeah. It's just no matter what. So what I'll choose to do is the, the least mature ones. This one here, this one here, this one here, this one here, this guy, and that guy at a minimum. Yeah. To me is obvious, right? Because you want to take, you want to leave the more mature ones on. Totally. One of these two has to go. Yeah. I'm, I'm preferential to this one. It's a little bit smaller. Okay. 
And then to be honest with you, down this one branch, Just there's another... five more. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave two, maybe three per branch total. Probably That's the it. wise move. Because last year what we did is we basically didn't thin anything on this tree. Yeah. And we had so many fruit, which was really cool but then they were a little less sweet than we would have expected. So like, for example, Jacques, take a look. I just took off the small growth here. So I have one more, okay. right? And then I'm gonna take off these small growths here and maybe this one here. And part of this is also conserving energy for the rest of the tree. So this Cause yeah, great. it might, they might abort themselves later, but you're, you're sort of helping it out by doing it early anyways. So yeah, it's a little labor intensive. Honestly, if you're in a backyard orchard situation like myself here, it's kind of fun to do this type of stuff. Now, if you were growing 50 trees, you're not gonna, you're, you're definitely not gonna do this, but rough. that's the thing about gardening. It's like gardening, farming, orcharding, all these things scale up and down the techniques that you wanna use based on the time and inputs that you actually have to use. But the tree looks really healthy and I think it's gonna be an absolutely wonderful harvest. It's gonna be a great peach year, great peach year. I think we're gonna see some of the best tasting fruit this year um, that we've ever seen. If you remember from Stone Fruit Frenzy, we get a little, <laughs> I get a little hype, get a little lit when the fruits come <laughs> out. So over here, we, we got no work to do, plenty more to do over here, but I actually want to turn our attention to the citrus hedge, okay. which we put in like almost two years ago now, Jacques, is one of the first things you and I did yeah, together. Sure. One of Jacques' first tasks here at the homestead. Let's start over here where the larger trees are. That's it. All righty, back to the citrus orchard, many moons ago at this point. So Jacques, we planted them four feet apart, like yep. we've talked about a million times. We're starting to see the results of that yeah. almost come in. In fact, I believe our bear's lime and our citrus here are just about to yeah. touch. And that's so the goal, right? Is that is the goal. A hedge. Yeah, that is the goal. Just let it be, just let it fly. However, these plants, citrus, you can prune them nearly any time of year. There's, there's not like a terrible time to prune them. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shape them so that they just look a little better going into the spring season while trying to not remove a lot of the lower third growth, which is where they really wanna be and trying not to thin out the interior. Right, because we don't want any sun to get into the tree for yeah. citrus. And as you can see, there's a lot of bushiness. So we're not really gonna run into that, I don't think. Yeah, I think we should. But there's good. like some haircuts, like for example, this. Even if I let this grow, what benefit am I gonna get from this? Not yeah. Almost nothing. So I'm gonna come in and give it a pretty serious cut. Okay. So you have free reign to- To get in there? To maul. Like here, see, I see these sorts of branches come up a lot, Jacques, where you get one come up, right? So this is an offshoot from a lower one. Oh, I and see. And then it just starts going wow. wild. Like it starts putting a ton out. To me, I'm like, I'd rather not. I'd Sorry. rather not. Part of this is aesthetic. I just want it to look a little bit cleaner. It is a hedge, hedgerow after all. And part of this is maintenance of growth and shape as per the decision that we made to plant them right. this damn close, right? Like not our, not, not a common decision. <laughs> Sorry, way. I'm juking you. Something about this variety here, Jacques, it really loves to go vertical. Yeah, let me see what this guy is. I don't know why. That's oh, a golden nugget mandarin. Yeah, this mandarin just loves going vertical. I'd prefer it to bush out more. It really stays like, I mean, it's protecting its its interior, which is great, yeah, that's but great. I don't know. And some of these are kind of twisted and floppy. I don't think they're gonna support good fruit. I don't think so either. I will say, I'm not gonna take a look at this. I'm not gonna touch the Satsuma. <laughs> the Satsuma needs all the help it can get, or sorry, the, uh, the Yuzu. Yuzu. I'll knock off the rotten fruit on this though. It might be because it's the first one in the chain of gray water. It's getting the most water and it might be getting a little oh, too much. Okay. I mean, honestly, this already looks a lot more pleasant to me. The one yeah. that you first did. And this one looks a little more organized. Yeah, I think so. So you want to let it bush in the way you want it to. You know right. what I mean? Control where it grows. So the bear's lime has been our most productive citrus by, by far. And easily my favorite. The bears, in contrast to the golden nugget, is coming out a lot, not going up as much. That's true. So I'm going to take it down a little bit for, from a width perspective. And then I guess any of these branches that might be sagging on the floor probably aren't ideal. You know, I don't mind that. Okay. I don't mind that. I'm still regretting my decision to not replace this one, the Owari Satsuma. But oh, there's uh, one fruit? Have you sampled? Uh, no, I've had a few. I've oh, had a that's few. right. It's actually quite good. You want to try it? I'm not, I'm not here to say no. It came, it came off easy, so <laughs> let's try. Little Windy City Jams right here. <laughs> it's a little dry, but mm. very good. I'm mad concentrated. No, it's really good. 
It's not too dry to me. It just has a lot of pith. It's very like concentrated flavors. Yeah. Like, it's like a gummy almost. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm. So see what happens, Jacques? Like look at this piece right here. I pruned it right there a while ago. Oh yeah. And it just went wild below it. <laughs> and I think that was a, I don't want it to do that. So. But this one does have a nice bushy, bushiness to bushy. it. It does, it does. What was this guy? There we go. Look at how many offshoots from one. <laughs> It's almost mutant-esque. It's almost like it's water sprouting from itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's true, yeah. Like um, it's panicking. Yeah, it's panicking or something like that, so. But there's a lot of new healthy growth coming. A lot so. of new growth. Uh, this one, I, I think we don't touch. Yeah, too sensitive. This is the Caracara. Oh, And it's small and, you, and you know, it's just let, let's let, let, let it, let's let it be. <laughs> uh, this is an example of a plant that I again think we probably shouldn't touch much because it is not as compact as you would want it to be, so. I don't know. I mean, I was thinking maybe maybe this one here. These. Yeah, to hopefully it'll bush up. But, I, but I'd like to see. I'd like to see these fruit come ready. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this guy here That's is definitely ready. This one's definitely ready. Let's take a look. I'm surprised by how vigorous it's been too. Oh, look at that juice just dripping. <laughs> there you go. Actually, you want me to cut a quarter? Here, yeah, I'll this cut might be a little, a little too much for one bite. One lemon. Here you go. <laughs> quarter for you. Perfect. It smells good. That's great flavor though. It's good. But I think I just stripped a little bit of enamel there. Here's some problems I see with this one. Yeah. I see really long stems with minimal growth and you can even see the damage oh, to the yeah. stem. That's probably sun damage or is that? It's either sun or stress. Yeah. You can see why, right? You got all this fruit hanging at the very end. Yeah, maybe we could thin some of the fruit. I would say let's thin some fruit, relieve a little bit of the pressure. And then once we get the fruit off of it this season, let's cut it back and maybe see if we can force some bushiness okay. out of it. This might be a, a, a particular habit of the plant, but it really seems to want to thin itself out on the stem and actually push a lot of the growth to the edges. You know yeah, what I mean? it really does seem to be uh, favoring the very tips of the branches for their production. Look right here. I mean, up here. Yeah. You're getting a lot of that. So I'll thin out this branch because it's extremely heavy. You could, but this isn't even strong enough to hold it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe we let Mother Gaia <laughs> and the winds <laughs> deal with it. Because here's the thing. All this new growth out here, it's, it, you're not losing it because you don't really want it because it's hanging off of... I mean, look, it's an offshoot of... You got this stem here. It's offshooting here. It has another offshoot here and another offshoot here. I think, I think you're going to go here maybe. Okay. I'll hold it. Honestly though, do you even want that? I feel like this might bush up and give some sun coverage here. All right, let's see. This is my theory. To cut at that angle. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty heavy too. Yeah. I think that's probably the right move. That's the right move. Honestly, like there's a case, look how much fruit is over here, dude. Am I really that worried to be losing <laughs> this right here? I'll live and die by my decision here, but I'm gonna cut this. Wow, that's fast. Yeah. All right. Because look, I mean, does the tree look better or does the tree look worse? I think on the net, it looks better. Yeah. I think probably this tree, you'd rather have this tree be twisted 180 because most of the sun's coming in this direction. Agreed. But we can't really change much of that. Maybe but, what we can do, Jacques, is when the wind chills out, we'll come in and treat this with some uh, guard. Paint it. And see if we can get a little bit of the sunburn off of it. Yeah. And plus right here, there's new growth coming. So that should fill in. That should fill this section. in. I'm a little tempted because you see some, some some growth coming up. Yeah. I like seeing this yes. a lot, right? I'm a little tempted to, to trim this down slightly. Honestly, like maybe here. Oh, that hard. Because because this we've got new growth coming out here that's not like thrown way out this way. Okay. But I'm but I'm honestly on the fence. I might leave I it. I feel like, yeah, we probably took a lot. I would say maybe we just harvest any of these yellow ones. Yeah. To free up a little energy. Yeah, yeah. And maybe we'll go. Well, let's let that be for now then. Yeah. We've done enough. The, the kumquat always goes through this weird hype cycle of being super deficient and then putting a lot of fruit out. I love the peels on kumquats, but the fruit itself is always too sour for me. Mm. I feel like if you eat it together though, it, it does hit. It's really good. This one here, again, I'm just gonna remove some of these big guys coming off. Let's see. Ooh, there's a little sneaker in there. Is there? Is it ready? Big sneaky boy. So we've had this happen a couple times where if you see right down here where the where I'm pointing with my Felco saw, it is below the graph point, but it, it tricks you and makes it think like it's not. <laughs> it's really and sneaky. And so what you gotta do, and it's like flush, right? So you gotta do is you kinda come in here. Ooh, right there. You got it? 
Which one it's is this it? one here? I'll pull it down. Oh, okay. See, this was oh, that's a total... one you just trimmed. Yeah, it was. So always look low on, on your tree. This is a total, total waste. Not even a decision. You have no. to remove this. That's a no brainer. Let it go. Now, Jacques, here's my question to you. See this offshoot right here? Yeah. Can you see oh, how much it's producing? Interesting. Would you be removing this or not? Because it's again one of those situations where like seven stems are emanating from one cup point. Honestly, that one might even be a rootstock again too. It's really close. It's really close. It's it's acting like one. You know how you know why I know that? Below that little graph. Why I know that is because look, it's first of all, it's close, but second of all, it's doing a lot of vertical streaming. Yeah. And it's not putting out a lot of new stuff. So. And actually, here's another surefire. Oh wait, is it? Do the honors. All right. I, I personally think that it is. So the thing I was noticing is that that branch has all these spikes, all yeah. the thorns, and the rest don't. And this doesn't. So yeah. that must be the rootstock. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, you're not always going to get that clear of a signal, but yeah. in this case, you're cutting a little bit off the side of that. There we yeah, go. Yeah. Okay, good. So take a look. You're getting a bunch of spikes here. The rest of this tree has no spikes on it whatsoever. Dead giveaway that you were dealing with a rootstock. And then you can also just look at the growth of it. It is shooting straight up <laughs> yeah. and just trying to get to light and, and honestly being wild, which is what it is. It's really more of a wild style of citrus just used for the roots. And the reason why we want to take it off is it's just robbing energy and it's not going to produce fruit that we want to eat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this was our, uh, this was a, <laughs> this is a, a citrus we want. <laughs> so now we have it. Okay. So let's take a look. This is the Eureka or excuse me, the Meyer. Oh, it's, it's got a little lemon on there. I would say it's it's failing to thrive a bit. But also these last three were only recently put in. Recently put in and also they're not on gray water. That's true. So the only thing I might do here is, I guess, honestly, probably nothing. Yeah. I don't think I'd do anything. I might snip this off. You got a little bit of too much little... leaf, leaf miner damage here. Um, but, but this new growth, I'm going to give it a chance. Let's grab that lemon too. It actually looks ready. It looks really good. This is a Meyer, so it should be nice and that sweet. That one will be sweet. Wow, it's really juicy. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Wow. It has that Meyer smell. It has like a really sweet aroma to it. It smells like someone's thrown sugar into it, like cane sh sugar. <laughs> I'm actually excited for that one. <coughs> oh, that's good oh. though. <laughs> Hit the back. <laughs> but it is sweet. I like this more than the uh, oh, pink lemonade. Oh, wow, that's good. Wow. Yeah. Honestly, the peel is good. I just took is a little it? nibble. Okay. And uh, I'm not mad. The peel is very thin. Yeah. Very thin. Give it a little nibble. I'm going to give it a nibby. Nibby. Oh, <laughs> you took a whole bite. <laughs> it's actually not like bitter, right? I feel like you could candy that and be delicious. All right. Well, let's hope that goes. We have the grapefruit and the calamansi. Nothing needs to be done. And honestly, it's getting too windy for me to care. <laughs> so let's take some shelter in the backyard. All right, let's do it. Watch your head, Jacques. Yeah. <laughs> this wind is blowing in hard. It, we, we almost got blown away out there. It's like 30, 35, 40 mile an hour gusts. And actually in other parts of the, the county, like power lines are getting blown down. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So we're going to call it. But if you want to see the greenhouse tour, it's on the main channel. So stay tuned for that. Thanks, guys. Let us know what else you want to see on this channel. Good luck in the garden.